بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على مبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد In the name of Allah the most merciful the deliverer of mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala the exalted and the high all praise and glory belongs to Allah Lord of the worlds and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the one whom he sent as a mercy to the worlds our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to continue we're coming full circle by Allah's permission and bounty with discussing the fundamentals of faith we discussed belief in Allah and the angels and the books and the messengers and the last day and now the sixth and final pillar of Iman of faith to believe in Qadr fate or destiny or predestination call it what you will but understanding it is the accomplishment okay this last core component of correct Iman correct faith directly stems from Tawheed. From what? From believing in the oneness of Allah. Why? Because in essence, it's to believe that Allah determines all things. He's never for a moment challenged, never for a moment forgetful, never for the moment unaware, never for a moment coerced, never for a moment survived, any of these. Right? That's why Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, he summarized Qadr. Fate in a word. He said, Well, Qadr Qudratullah. Qadr destiny is the ability of, of Allah. Meaning, this in reality is what it boils down to. This is what a peace person needs to understand. And understanding the concept of destiny in light of the Quran and Sunnah, the revelation that has been given to us as a guidance. And this subject is one of the greatest proofs that the Quran and Sunnah are the ultimate guidance. Because it is the only system. The only fountain that gave us an understanding about destiny that doesn't contradict itself. You know, for thousands of years, philosophers otherwise say, destiny, free will or not. And every approach they've had has never been flawless. It's always been too complicated to understand, so you just give up on it. Or you see a clear contradiction there, or the philosopher himself says, uh, despite him being the most top-notch thinker, right? They had powerful minds, these guys, right? But they simply could not put it together. Why? Because whomever Allah does not grant the light for, there is no light. So in light of the Quran and Sunnah, believing and affirming in Qadr, destiny, stands on four pillars. If you can understand these four pillars, inshaAllah, you will understand the concept of Qadr, concept of destiny. These four pillars are, number one, knowledge. Number two, writing. Number three, Will. Number four, creation. Knowledge, writing, will, creation. What does that mean? Knowledge. This is to believe that Allah knows all things. General and specific. Past, present, future. Even the hypothetical. Meaning something that didn't happen. Had it happened, how it would have happened? Allah the Most High says, about the people on the Day of Judgment. They stand there atop the hellfire. They say, oh Allah send us back. Allah says, if we had sent them back, we're not gonna. But if we would send them back, they're going to return to doing what we forbid, from them, forbid them from doing. Disbelief. Even the hypothetical he knows. Allah the Most High, he says, And with Allah are the keys to the unseen. None possesses them, none knows of them except him. And he knows everything in land and at sea. That's general knowledge. And there's not a leaf that falls except that he knows about it. That's specific knowledge. And there's not a seed in the darknesses of the earth. Meaning imagine a seed in the middle of the night, under the darkness of the ocean, under the darkness of the mud of the ocean, darknesses. Except that he knows about it. There's nothing dry, nothing wet, except that it's already in a book clearly determined. So the knowledge of Allah is all encompassing. Right? Surah Al Baqarah. He knows what's between their hands and what is behind them. Between their hands and what they're seeing right now, the present. And what's behind them, what they don't know about, what's yet to come, the future. 
And there are of course dozens of ayat and ahadith that, that expound on the knowledge of Allah and establish these points. But if Allah knows the unseen, then by greater virtue, He knows the seen, even by comparing. Additionally, Allah's knowledge varies from the knowledge of His creation. What, how? It's not preceded by ignorance. It's not that Allah didn't know and then He learned. Nor is it followed by forgetfulness. Not that He knows, but in the future it may slip past Him. Exalted and high, the Supreme. No. Allah mentions that when His Prophet Musa السلام, was debating with Fir'aun, He says about His Lord, Indeed, my Lord, He knowledge of everything is with Him. He was asked about the previous stations. Knowledge of it is with my Lord in a book. My Lord is never misled, never that he's ignorant of anything, nor does he forget. So his knowledge is different from the knowledge of us in that manner. So this is pillar one. Ready? You have to understand all four pillars and pull them together. Qadr becomes clear. Pillar number two, writing. To believe that Allah's aforementioned knowledge, we just mentioned, right? That it has been written and documented before it took place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Do you, don't they look at everything in the heavens and the earth? Inna thalika fi kitab. Indeed, all that is in a book. Inna thalika ala Allah yaseer. Indeed, this is something very easy for Allah, the Most High. So everything has been written. That Allah knows of, His knowledge about what will occur until the Day of Judgment has been written. What is this writing? There are different types of writing. This helps a lot to understand. Writing, as some scholars mention, has been done at four levels. Level one is the preserved tablet, al-lawh al-mahfuz, that you read about in the Quran. In this, everything that will exist until the last day has been written. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, Sahih Muslim is the narration, كتب الله مقادير الخلائق. Allah wrote the determinations, the decrees of the creations, all of them, 50,000 years before He created the heavens and the earth. And this is in Allah al-Mahfud, the preserved tablet that is with Allah the Most High. The second type of writing is the lifetime rec records. Every person that lives now has a record of what will happen in its lifetime. When does this get written? When the fetus gets through the initial developmental stages in the womb, Allah the Most High determined that this writing takes place. In Bukhari and Muslim, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when the initial stages of development are finished, I'm paraphrasing the hadith to get past it, ثُمَّ يُرْسَلُ إِلَيْهِ الْمَلَكِ And then an angel is sent to him. فَيَنْفُخُ فِيهِ الرُّوحِ And an angel blows the soul into the fetus. وَيُؤْمَرُ بِأَرْبَعِ كَلِمَاتِ And he's commanded with four commands. بِكَتْبِ رِزْقِهِ وَأَجَلِهِ وَعَمَلِهِ وَشَقِيٌّ أَوْ سَعِيدٌ To write his sustenance, what he's going to receive in his life. Wealth, health, children, reputation, his sustenance, his provisions, what he's going to be provided with. And أَجَلِهِ His lifespan, his appointment, how long he's going to live. وَعَمَلِهِ And his acts, what kind of acts he's going to perform. وَشَقِيٌّ أَوْ سَعِيدٌ and whether or not he's going to be doomed or prosperous. So this occurs when the person is in the womb of his mother. So the preserved tablet, then the lifetime record. The third record is the annual record that is written every single year. When in Laylatul Qadr, the night of Qadr, the night of decree or the night of power, Allah has all the incidents of that year written that will occur in that year, who will die in that upcoming year, who will live, who will receive what provisions, who will be misled, who will be guided in this upcoming year, it is written in Laylatul Qadr. You go to the Dukhan, it's clear. Allah says, Hamim wal kitab al mubin inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Mubaraka, inna kunna mundhirin. Hamim, and the, we swear by the clear book, indeed we have sent down this book, the Quran, in a blessed night, we were by that warners. I mean, by sending down the Quran, we've warned the creation. Then he speaks about the night the Quran was sent down and he says, Fiha yufraqu kullu amrin hakim. In this night, every wise matter is decided. Every wise matter is decided. The fourth record is the daily record. Each day has its own record according to which this day is run. 
Allah the Most High, He says in Surah Ar-Rahman, يَسْأَلُهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي شَأْنٍ Whosoever is in the heavens and the earth, they ask of Him, they ask of Allah, their needs. Every day has its own affair. I mean, these will be honored today and these will be disgraced today. These will be guided today, these will be misled today. These will be given life today, life will be taken away from others today. Khalas. Done? These are the four levels. Now, the scholars came and they grabbed the ayat and ahadith that mention that certain acts can affect destiny. You say, wait a minute. Destiny's meaning is destined. It's predestined. It's fated. It's done. So how can it affect destiny? Like for example, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يرد القضاء إلا الدعاء Nothing repels destiny except supplication. ولا يزيد في العمر إلا البر And nothing increases someone's lifespan except righteousness. Another hadith he says, whomever wishes to have an expanse in his provisions and for his lifespan to be lengthened, let him keep ties with his family. So wait a minute, how can that be when his lifespan has been determined? They said, okay. The Allawh al mahfud everything has been determined there. This doesn't get changed. Whereas all the others may be changed. For example, Allah wrote on Laylatul Qadr that you're going to lose your leg this year in a car accident, right? So you made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the basketball team. So instead of making the basketball team, he saved your leg, okay? But in Allawh al mahfud it is written what? That it will be written that he breaks his leg, but he will make dua so it won't happen. Clear? طيب. So with that understanding, we know that these issues that are written for us, we are to work and to supplicate and to act righteousness so that Allah writes for us what is most pleasing to us. But all of that in the end, has been already known by Allah and Allah has recorded that knowledge. Recorded that knowledge is an important point because we're still going to get to the third pillar now. We said knowledge and writing and get to the will. So don't we have a will or not? Allah has recorded His knowledge. Number three, and He has willed it. But what does it mean now that He has willed it? Has He compelled? Uh, far above Allah, some of the early Muslims have said, far above Allah from needing to compel, from needing to force. What is the will? It's to believe that everything in existence or non-existence, meaning something exists or it doesn't exist, that's by Allah's will, right? Didn't pressure the Most High, nor did it exist in a separate universe outside of His territories, glorified as Allah from attributing such things to Him. So everything that exists or doesn't exist is part of the will of Allah, including your actions. Including my actions, how does that work? Allah the Most High says, Wallahu yaf'alu ma yasha. Allah does whatever He wills. And Allah says, Walaw sha Allahu maqtatalu. And if Allah had willed, they would not have fought. The nations would not have fought one another. And Allah has said, Wama tashauna illa an yasha Allah. And had Allah not willed, you would never have willed. So what does it mean that Allah had willed? We have a will? Absolutely. But the issue is that Allah is the one that decided. He willed for us to have a will. You understand? So our will is a product of the will of Allah, okay? And our will is secondary to the will of Allah. So for example, I want to be alive today. Allah decides you're not going to live tomorrow. But I want to be alive tomorrow. Allah's will takes precedence. But that's not an action. A better example. I wish to be guided. But I have ignored guidance time and time again. Allah will not allow my heart to be open to guidance. It's my will, I want to be guided. And if you will to be guided, you will be guided. Because there's always the precedence of what Allah's will is always paired with wisdom, always paired with justice. He will not wrong anyone. But in the end, the matters will go back to Him. The matters are always in His hands. And the default and the original fact is that Allah allows you to choose or else that would have been an injustice. And Allah has made that crystal clear to us all throughout the Quran and Sunnah. And everything that Allah will we must always tie it with wisdom, extensive wisdom, wisdom that perhaps we can't understand. And Allah taught us to do that in the Quran when He said, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا And you don't will unless Allah wills. Indeed, Allah is most knowing, most wise, subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So surely humans and jinn have a will. Because if they didn't have a will, then paradise and the hellfire are unjust, right? You're punishing for someone that wasn't for something that wasn't in his hands, right or wrong. And you're rewarding someone for something that's meaningless. What are you rewarding him for when it wasn't him that did it? So our will is subordinate to the will of Allah and Allah granted us a will. An example. You're reading pages in a book. Did someone force you to read them? Huh? No. So it was your will to read this book. Right? No one had a gun to your head, I hope. But if Allah willed, you could not have found the book. Right or wrong? So if a person is sincere and truthful with Allah, he will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitating his will to be guided. Is that clear? And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his justice, deem that this person no longer deserves to see guidance, he will not recognize it any longer. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tie upon our hearts and bind guidance upon our hearts till the day we meet him. Allahumma ameen. Of course, also, so one person must say that you don't know your will until it comes to pass. So you can't blame anything on Qadr, right or wrong. You say, but it was willed that I steal, <laughs> right? So I'm not blameworthy for stealing. Allah destined it. You don't know that it was willed until you chose to do it. And then you found out that Allah let you steal. So you say, okay, it was the will of Allah. So there's no excuse. You didn't know it. He could have stopped you. That's why Umar al-Khattab, when he took a man, uh, told him, why are you punishing me for something that was willed upon me? Allah willed that I drink alcohol or I steal this product. He said, it's Allah's will that I punish you, right? You see, the human being knows that he's being delusional with himself when he puts this excuse forward. The human being will only blame the qadr, destiny, for the things that go wrong, or the disaster in his life, or a sin that he doesn't want to be blameworthy for. But he'll never say, oh, don't thank me for that. It's, it's the will of Allah, right? Don't, no, no, I don't deserve that money. It's not my doing that I'm so intelligent. I don't deserve the promotion, right? They only blame it with what? The evil. Because deep down inside, they know what they're saying. Even if they send forth the excuses. Lastly, the fourth belief in Qadr stands on creation. So believe that Allah is the creator. And Allah created everything. And that everything that is not Allah has been created. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّا كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَاهُ بِقَدَرٍ Surah Al-Qamar. Indeed, we have created all things with qadr, with our decree. So if it's the sun, Allah created it. The moon, Allah created it. The mountains, Allah created them. The people, Allah created them. The people's actions, Allah created them. But they're attributed to Allah. He created them and He put them into existence. Or else you're saying there's another creator, right? There's no creator for evil and creator for good. No. We'll get to the issue of evil in a minute. Allah created the action, meaning He made its existence possible. Okay? But the human being earned the action. This is why the Prophet ﷺ used to say, وَالشَّرُّ لَيْسَ إِلَيْكِ And evil is not to be attributed to you. you say, but is there evil in the world? Absolutely there's evil in the world. So how do you deal with that? The Prophet ﷺ told us, وَالْخَيْرُ كُلُّهُ فِي يدي. Good is in your hands only. وَالشَّرُّ لَيْسَ إليك. That's the, the theme. And evil is not attributed to you. Having established that, we say it's the qadr of Allah that aspects exist that contain evil. But there's no such thing really as evil. What do I mean? Evil is relative. Okay? A lion eating a person. That's bad news. It's evil. But it's good for the lion. <laughs> Yes or no? The issue of evil is relative. Because for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to permit for pure evil to exist, this contradicts with wisdom. Allah does not will for anything without wisdom. Something purely evil. What's the wisdom in that? There's no good that comes out of it. Allah the Most High, He says, Surah Al-Rum. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون. Corruption has appeared. That's bad. That's evil. In land and at sea, because of what the people's hands have earned, so that they may taste. There's a wisdom here. So that they may taste part of what they've done, part of the consequence of sin before the day of judgment. You better taste it now, so you come back. So that they may taste a part of what they've done, or they've done, لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ So that they may turn back, while they still have a chance. 
So this is just one example of evil, uh, evil existing for, for a wisdom and an end result that is good. Similarly, for example, a disease falling upon a person that's arrogant. Regardless of how difficult the disease is, there's great benefit in that. A person that doesn't have the disease becoming grateful, right or wrong. A person that is arrogant and receives that disease, he becomes humbled before he meets Allah arrogant. And the arrogant are resurrected on the day of judgment in the size of ants, as he said, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Right? Likewise, Allah willing for the existence of sin and disbelief to happen in the world. This is not void of benefit. There's multiple wisdoms involved in this. The scholars, they say that we know many wisdoms for sin to exist. And there's even more wisdoms that we don't know. Shaytan even, the, the imam of sin and disbelief. There's a wisdom in him in existing. He's not pure evil. He's an example of Allah's justice. That's one. Right or wrong? He was so righteous that he was raised to the level of the angels. And then his arrogance took him down. But Allah repaid him in this life because he has nothing in the hereafter. He got to live till the day of judgment. Justice, such fairness. Shaitan existing is an example of a person being able to climb to the heights and then because of arrogance fall to the pits again. It's another lesson. How many people climbed the levels of patience and the levels of Jannah through their patience because of disobeying the whisper of Shaitan? Had he not whispered, they would not have been inclined. They would not have gotten the right reward. So even in that, loving and hating for the sake of Allah, there's an act of worship that wouldn't exist if there was not sin and disbelief out there. Migrating and leaving your country for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or defending it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these would not be acts of worship that have any meaning. Had disbelief not existed and sin not existed, who was Allah going to forgive? And we know about His beautiful forgiveness and His beautiful mercy, right? He's the forgiver, the one that forgives those that sin. So correct belief in Qadr, of course, has numerous precious benefits. Of them is ensuring the correctness of one's Iman. Because if you don't believe in Qadr correctly, it's one of the pillars of Iman, and one of the legs of that table have been broken, right? One of the pegs upon which your Iman stands have faltered. And deficiency in part of your Iman means deficiency in the entirety of your Iman. Secondly, Qadr grants a person a better understanding about Allah. As Shaykh al-Islam say me rahimahullah, he mentioned in Al-Qayyim, actually mentioned in Da'wah Dawa, there is no greater pleasure in this world than getting to know Allah and yearning to meet Him. Through Qadr, a person understands that. And there's no greater pleasure in the next world than meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and living in His paradise. Also, Qadr grants a person calmness and security in his life. When a calamity strikes, it is by the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Protects them from depression, protects them from anxiety, protects them from undue fears, protects them from the suicides that the people that are imanless, that those that don't have faith, are plagued with day and night. Also, knowing that everything has been decreed by the Qadr of Allah, and with this we close, inshallah, it protects a person from his own demons. A person doesn't rely upon himself, right? So that fights off him being arrogant or being a coward, knowing that everything in the end is in the hands of Allah. It was reported by Khalid bin Walid, rahimahullah, was one of the great generals of Islam. That when he was dying, he said, these cowards never got to sleep. They're always worried, they're always worried, they're always worried they're going to die. Here I'm dying, like a sheep dies in the pen, even though <laughs> there's not a part on my body that isn't scarred with a, a sword or a spear or an arrow. It's the Qadr of Allah. If it's not written for you, it's not going to happen. Right? So may Allah make us of those that are comfortable with His decree and confident with His plan for us and make us of those that are guided and guide others with us and make guidance, for e make guidance easy for us. Allahumma ameen. Forgive me for the elongation in this one, but I thought to pull it all for full circle. May Allah grant us iman that is firm and make us of those that believe in Him and worship Him as though we see Him and make the ultimate best day of our lives, the day that we meet Him and the ultimate best pleasure in our reward us seeing his glorious face, Allahumma ameen, wa sallallahu ma'anabina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.